Come on. Just a few steps at a time, folks. Do not rush this. The smaller steps you take in any kind of dog training, the faster you're gonna get there. Hey everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone and we have got a fun one. If you have a dog that you struggle with, he stretched out, I thought he was peeing. If you have a dog that is struggling with pulling on leash, I'm gonna show you a very cool, simple drill that you can work on that is as positive only reinforcement as we can make it and show you that with thunder now if you followed along with any of our stuff you will know that thunder is about one year old and you're probably thinking huh i've never seen a healing video with him and that's because i have never taught him how to heal and yes he's 12 months old just turned that the other day okay now the big difference between me and him and our situation is the fact we don't live in town folks i know that y'all do and or a lot of you do and healing or leash walks is an extremely important part of everyday life you've got to take them out on leash to go to the bathroom you've got to take them on leash to go for walks for some level of exercise or um, mental stimulation of let's get out and do something and it can become a staple okay we have a product called the easy lead that is what i've got bandolier style rocking it right here matched it with my shirt and everything okay? i was gonna ask you if you planned that i did not but i remembered once i took my sweatshirt off that i was wearing this shirt and it looks good i think so i'm going to show you this method this is a pretty simple process i've got one of a, a check cord here I've got this looped, so I kind of have, because this doesn't have a handle on it, it's designed to be drugged behind a dog, and we don't want that to get caught on anything. But I've, I've made a little makeshift handle with a loop here, and I've got my clicker, okay? I'm gonna be walking him around. We're gonna see this guy doesn't understand perfect manners. He's a pretty good boy, and if you follow along with the series at all, you would know he's thunder, all right? He's a, he's a superstar, but, He's gonna pull on leash and we're gonna show you how we can essentially pull his focus back to us. We're gonna use a little verbal when he gets toward the end of the leash or about to that tug point. Hey, hey, hey. And when he focuses on us, I'm gonna mark that and reward him and we're just gonna walk around. Let's get started here, buddy. All right. Good. Change direction. Hey, hey, hey. Oop, I had my clicker turned around backwards. I was like, why aren't you clicking? Okay, let's try again here. Changing directions here. Hey, 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 good. Mark that, he heard the click noise. He knows that means maybe I should come up here and check this out. Come on, big guy. About to the edge of that loop. That's what we're looking for. I don't want him to hit the all the way to the end point. Hey, 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 good boy. Now, clickers, right guys, they mark an end behaviors. What am I trying to mark here? Hey, 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 good. I'm marking him turning around and coming back to me. There you go. Not all the way to me. Not hitting the end of the leash and marking that. I'm marking when he's turned around. He's made that idea that maybe that little bit of verbal, which we can turn into other things later, that means turn around and pay attention. We're trying to teach him to pay attention to us on leash. If we've got his attention, hey, 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 good. He's not going to be pulling quite so bad here. Good, there you go. There's your treat from that last click. Hey, 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 good boy, good boy. There you go. Walk out this way. Hey, hey, hey. Ah. I missed that one, folks. Come on, Bubba. Hey, 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 good. As soon as that turn came in, say, yeah, buddy, that's right. Hey, 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 good boy. We're keeping his focus on us. He's loving this. Good job, come on. Hey, hey, good boy. Hey, 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 good. Now he didn't come in for that last one. 
The clicker is kind of a, these are quieter clickers and there's a chance that he didn't hear it. Hey, 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 good boy. Bigger distractions, right folks? There he was more interested in sniffing the breeze. I wasn't quite as important. You're gonna see this with positive reinforcement training. Essentially, we're trying to add something to the situation to pull the dog's focus to us. But what's going to happen, hi, hi, good. We're gonna stop this for just one second. What's going to happen is if you get to the point where the reward, these treats in this situation that I'm carrying, isn't important enough to the dog, what are they gonna do? They're gonna continue on about their business. So this process takes reps. Now I wanna do a few more reps and continue to show how much progress we can make in one session, but understand, if you're looking for this positive only method, it's not gonna happen in a minute, it's not gonna happen overnight, it's not gonna happen in a week. It's going to take lots of reps. Now, the big differences you're going to see are individual dogs' personalities. You may have a dog that's super cooperative, a different breed than a short hair, and their job is to be cooperative and dependent, and you're gonna see a completely different result. But if you've got a dog that is a pulling monster, a lot of times they're a dog that happens to have a more independent nature to their personality. This breed specifically, they're designed to go out and hunt and work. That's independent from us, so that's what he's looking to do. Good. Hey, 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 good boy. A little verbal praise in there. You saw him pick that pace up. Hey, good boy. It's distraction, right? Hey, 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 good boy. There you go. Little body language. Hey, hey, hey. Good. Tried to mark him focused on me. Hey, hey. Good. Good dog. Let's see here. Hey. I'm trying to see if we can start to build. Hey, hey. A point where there it is. Another distraction, folks. Now, granted. Thunder is, these are several that you've missed, buddy, being distracted. Where'd it go? Somewhere we dropped it in there, okay? What I'm trying to see is him start to figure this out. We're gonna do some more reps still yet with this, but try and see him figure out that when I'm changing, that's when he's gonna get rewarded. But what I'm struggling with right now, folks, is that I don't have an important enough reinforcer for him that in every situation is he interested in turning yet. Most of them, sure, we're getting not most, we're getting half, maybe 50-50. The, uh, the other half, what he's doing is still focused on the wind or the grass or the something to sniff. Let's see if we can build a little more. Like I said, this isn't gonna happen overnight. Hey, 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 good boy. Nah, 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 you grab it right here. Here it is, good dog. Hey, hey, good. Let's see if we can get Little tug, come on, come on. There you go. Hey, 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 hey. Good. Distractions, getting sucked into the wind, getting pulled out there. What'd you find? Hey, what did you find? Was it a leaf or something? Come on, there are no trees in Kansas. Hey, 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 good boy. All right, so he is less interested. Hey, good boy. Good dog, good dog, come on. Hey, there you go. Good boy. Hey, hey, hey. Trying to mark. It seems a little bit haphazard. Like, oh, when is he clicking? I hear the click and whatever. What I'm trying to mark is his focus back at me. And he turns, but he's still looking over here. That's not what we're looking for. I'm trying to build focus here. So I've gotta be marking as specific as I possibly can. And I'm waiting for those eyes to come back this direction. Cause if he's paying attention to me, good boy. Hey, hey. He's not gonna do this. He's not gonna hit the end of that lead. Hey, 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 hey. Distracted all the way around. I think though, what you can see is in Right here, right guys? What is this? Pulling, pulling, pulling. Come here. 
Come here, big dog. What you can see is if you're looking for the method that is positive only, this can be a way that you can start to incorporate building focus to you as a handler in an on-leash situation, okay? It gives you a little bit of control when he is more distracted, you're able to say, I still got a hold of you, big guy. And then when he does it right, you can reward him. And you're gonna see over time that that is going to get better. Now, what we typically do is completely different, okay? We have our easy lead. Now, this happens to be made out of the same material as that check cord, it's just a different color. Let me get this bad boy out of the way here. What we do here is slip, 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 slip. We've uh, run this through the ring on the clip, and now we have a standard slip leash, okay? That fits up tight around his neck. A lot of people utilize just this type of training leash to work on healing. And we're gonna take it through to the next step. We're going to give a little slack here, make one twist. That's gonna go up over his muzzle, and then we tighten this down. Now, when we tighten it down, there's a couple things that are very important. One of which, the slip is gonna go off the outside. You see, that's where our movement happens, the outside. If you wanna heal your dog on the right, it's gonna to have to come off the right side. If you wanna heal your dog on the left, it's gonna to have to come off the left side. Then you've got the head halter. This is a makeshift head halter, essentially. This piece that goes up over his muzzle gives us complete control over his head. This ring, we want to stay as close to possible into the middle between his ears. And we're gonna start by helping him to get comfortable. Now we've talked about this in the past. This dude is very mentally powerful. He doesn't get upset about too much too often, and this is gonna be another one of them. This is his first experience with this. Now, a couple things I do wanna say are in my favor here. First of all, he's a little bit tired. It's warmer than we've had seasonably thus far. He's been on lead, bouncing back and forth a bit, learning, working a little bit, and he's kind of just the tip of the edge is off, okay? This is gonna make my job easier rather than starting with the wild bucking bronco. Good boy. Now, when we get used to this, we want to apply a little bit of pressure just to see what is his reaction going to be. Can he feel that? Can he handle that? Is he jumping and flailing all around? If he was jumping and flailing all around or digging out his face to try and get it off, so you're throwing a fit, a tantrum, essentially, is what's happening here, we would stop him. We would grab here under his belly. We'd apply a little bit of pressure until he settles down. Stop. Stop that, good. And then reward him when he's no longer fighting, thrashing, or moving. Now, we've got a dog that's comfortable. This may take you one session. This may take you a week. This may take you two weeks. The key is that you don't let your dog out of it. We talk about this a lot in our collar conditioning videos or any type of negative reinforcement scenario where um, we are going to be removing that pressure when they comply with what we're looking for, that is the, the key in those is to not give in to what the dog is doing unless it is exactly what you're wanting them to do because you're, you're in fact reinforcing whatever the behavior is. So collar conditioning, if they try and escape or they run away, they're not going coming to you or they're not going on their dog bed or whatever you're conditioning, if they do the opposite of that and you let the button off because you're not sure what's going on, well, you just reinforce that behavior. Same thing here. If he jumps all around and acts like a turd and we say, okay, I'm, I'm done with this, then we in fact, again, reinforce that behavior. The mild annoyance went away when he was doing whatever he was doing, okay? So we've accomplished here a dog that is comfortable with this. Now, the first step that you need to take, everybody listen to this right here, okay, hear me. The first step that you need to take is not forward, okay? Everybody wants to instantly start walking and two things happen here. The pressure on this leash is designed to stop the dog. So you take a step forward and you tug on your dog, okay? That says stop, and yet we want them to walk, right? What we are working with here is pressure on, pressure off, and it's very important. The pressure off is as important, if not more important, than the pressure on. He's got to be able to understand that when he's doing it right, he's not going to feel the pressure. When he's doing it wrong, he's going to get those tug, tug, tugs until he's back where he's supposed to be. 
Um, last thing that I can think about with this before we actually try and start moving with them is your position with the leash. This material is extremely springy and that springiness makes it work properly. So you may be thinking, hey, I've got a rope, I can do this at home. It's not exactly the same thing. Um, in fact, it's not the same thing at all, but it, it's, it's close-ish, okay? Um, when we've got this here, as soon as this is snugged up, right? As soon as I drop my hand, you see that release around his neck here and over his muzzle. Hey, turn around so everybody can see. As soon as I drop my hand, that releases pressure, okay? It's probably not overly visible there, but if you walk around with your hand down all the way and it's completely loose and sloppy, it's gonna be easy for this to flop. Turn around, bub. It's gonna be easy for this to flop off his nose, just like that, okay? You've got to find a happy medium of where things are supposed to be. And each dog's gonna be just a little bit different. We've got this back where it needs to be here. We're gonna pull it up so that it's just snug, and then we're gonna drop our hand just a few inches. This gives us the ability to give that little tug and then also release the pressure. Okay, so now we've got him where he needs to be. Our first step is going to be into him. I'm gonna move into him, he's gonna move away from me. Now I want you to watch tension here. I've got tension off of the leash. I'm gonna step into him and then I'm gonna stop him, okay? There was no tension on the leash while he started walking. When I wanted him to stop, we pulled up. Now we only took one or two steps at a time. This is all you need to be doing, okay? Through him here and then stop him, good into him and then stop him good good he's a happy little boy bouncing around that's okay all we're trying to do is develop movement and being comfortable with that movement good okay he's comfortable with this this may take your dog one session it may take your dog one week so on and so forth Wait until your dog is comfortable. You can make these movements and stop them. And there's no adverse reaction from the dog. They're not jumping around, they're not digging, they're not fighting this process. He's comfortable, confident. Now we need to encourage forward movement. And again, we can't tug him to make forward movement happen. We need to be encouraging here. Hey, good, he's looking for our hand there. And then we stop him, right? There was no tension on the leash when I asked him to move forward, and when I wanted him to stop, I applied pressure on the leash. Good. Come on. Just a few steps at a time, folks. Do not rush this. The smaller steps you take in any kind of dog training, the faster you're gonna get there. You're gonna see this here. Come on. Good. See the curl here? Ah, 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 I don't want that. Sniffing the ground isn't healing. Come on. Good. We made a little loop, folks. Let's do another one here. We got some distractions, some vehicles leaving. Ah, 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 come on. There you go, good. Verbal praise when he's doing it right. We don't want it to be too exciting. That's gonna encourage something that's gonna get him in trouble, but a little bit of a, yeah, buddy, that's right. That's what you're supposed to be doing is important here. Come on. There's a little head shake, right? Ah, ah, a little reach with the paw. He got a little pop from the leash. As long as it's not constant pressure, that's going to be a good thing. Come on. Good. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. Get his attention. That's what we need to do. Good boy. Inside turn here, use my body. This comes back into all of the other drills that we've done. If you haven't seen those, check it out. Standing stone, healing drills. It'll show all of them that we've got on the internet there. Come on, come on, come on. Good boy. Inside turn again. There you go, good. Good. Confident boy. <laughs> Bigger distractions off that direction. Good, hey, hey, hey. Okay, now I am going to call that it. You can see his ears down, relaxed. They aren't pinned, he's not scared. He's submissive, okay? That's an important thing. He is relaxed, he's respectful. These are all good things that you should be seeing out of your dog. We've heard it all, 
Folks, like my dog doesn't like this leash because their personality changes. Well, let's think about the personality that you're working with to begin with, okay? You've got your dog on a leash, they're bouncing all over the place acting like a wild hooligan. Hopefully their personality is gonna change a little bit or you aren't moving toward the end goal, which is respectful, well-behaved, well-mannered puppy, okay? Now I wanna tell you, this is my final thoughts for you, folks. This leash, is the first, this is the first time you're watching right here, the first time that we have done any healing work with Thunder in his entire life. You saw the beginning stages, um, the folks that wanna see that positive only method, okay? We made some progress there. He was paying attention. There wasn't a ton of pulling on the leash, but again, he was able to focus on whatever else was more important than those treats that I had with me today. Now, your dog may fall in line with that method really well. If it does, excellent, go for it. If not, in a short 10 minute training session, we've taken him from dragging us around, essentially pulling on the leash a lot, to not pulling on the lead. Now, I want to also explain, there are a few things that you, are, you need to keep in mind with this leash. This is step one. This is not finished and done. And if you utilize this lead like this forever, you are only halfway doing justice with your dog. Once we have a good behavior developed, now I would walk him like this for the next few weeks to a month in all of his training sessions. Then once he is good with this and we've got a pretty, there's no fighting, there's no pulling ever. He's very respectful of the leash. Then we're gonna take this off of his muzzle and we're gonna utilize a slip lead here because we've already developed a good healing behavior and we're gonna to start to overlay the e-collar so that eventually we have a dog that is completely collar, collar conditioned and can heal 100% off lead or just straight loose lead. And we finish that by running this leash back out and we've got a four and a half foot or the other option would be a six foot long leash and you have a dog that can walk completely, completely loose lead. Thanks guys for watching. I hope this helped. If you have questions, throw them in the comment below or reach out to us at patreon.com slash standingstonekennels. Uh, I'm the guy with the pink gun. This is Thunder. We love you all, and we'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.